Just some basics about conducting human uh, research, and obviously I'm focusing on um, the requirements in the U.S., um, which is where uh, I practice. So under the uh, Food and Drug Administration regulations, um, it's an actual federal re uh, regulation uh, to have institutional review board at every hospital where human research is being conducted. And so uh, these uh, IRBs uh, are requ required to regulate all types of human research. And their job is really essentially to protect um, uh, the rights and welfare of human subjects. So this is the essential uh, preoccupation of the, of the IRB. So they follow basic rules, and I just want to mention what the basic rules are. One, you want to minimize risks to the patients uh, in whom uh, research is being conducted. Uh, you also want to make sure that risks and benefits are well balanced. Uh, you want to make sure that there's equitable uh, selection of subjects, uh, no uh, biases in terms of subject selection. That's an important uh, thing. Informed consent is critical, um, so we'll go more into the details of those aspects. Data and safety monitoring while you're conducting human research is critical. Protecting privacy and conf confidentiality of your patients. And also uh, paying special attention to uh, particularly vulnerable populations uh, when you're conducting research. Um, so just uh, since we're in the realm of uh, surgery and not uh, pharmaceutical uh, research, uh, obviously a big focus is medical devices and investigating new uh, um, medical devices. Uh, so one specific regulation is when you're conducting um, uh, studies looking at safety and effectiveness of uh, new medical devices, you need to, to, uh, to obtain an IDE, investig Investigational Device Exemption uh, from um, the FDA, especially uh, when it relates to uh, significant risk devices. So that's critical because the IRB will expect you as a researcher to already have gone through the FDA to obtain an IDE and at that point uh, uh, get approved and then the IRB will assume that you've already obtained it before uh, giving you the okay to proceed for investigating uh, that device. Mm -hmm. And also important is, and I think that's something we often uh, forget, is if you're going to be using an already commercially approved device, but in a different set of application, um, then you have to think that potentially the IRB might request that you get an IDE for off-label use of that device. And that's something that we often forget as we use devices in other ways, for example, through natural orifices when they're really de designed to uh, be using through the abdominal cavity, et cetera, et cetera. So something to keep in mind. Now, once the device has been approved or deemed to be safe and you're trying to market it, then there's a whole um, aspect of uh, marketing and the rules for marketing uh, 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 devices. And that follows the rules of essentially uh, low-risk devices or class one or two, usually just a 510K pre-market uh, notification is required, where you just have to prove essentially that the device is uh, equivalent uh, to an already uh, uh, legally mar marketed device. But if the device is deemed to be more uh, risky, then you have to go through a whole process of PMA, what we call a pre-market approval application. And that's much more onerous in terms of the data that the FDA is going to expect from the company uh, trying to market that device.